all of us uh, related uh, to HB, um, HBSO is in somehow, in some way related to the identification of uh, better diagnostic tools and treatments for neurological disorders. We all know the critical importance that biomarkers have for this. However, in the last decade, we have seen the number of available biomarkers to grow to millions with new data coming from molecular technologies, electrophysiology, neuroimaging, clinical, uh, new digital devices. The number of available biomarkers have increased exponentially. And this represents a new challenge, how to identify the optimal biomarker for tracking the disease progression associated to each disorder. And what if at the end there is an, an optimal biomarker? In a group, rather than focusing on a specific biomarker or a specific uh, data modality, we are trying to, we're, we're assuming an integrative approach that focuses on aggregating the different layers of information available for each patient. This is of course not trivial. Uh, the question would be then how to uh, aggregate or how to combine all these massive amount of data in a biologically meaningful way. That's precisely what on what computational disease progression models focus on. I'm sure we all have here about the empirical models. There are two main families in disease progression models. The empirical models usually for example, the typical cases like a deep learning model to make predictions are uh, models that focus on making predictions with the available data and can integrate as much data available. They are, however, difficult to interpret or they could be challenging to interpret. On the other hand, we have mechanistic models that focus on biological understanding. So they offer an idea or they help to validate hypotheses or test ideas or mechanisms associated to each disease. However, they may have a low predictive power, at least in comparison with the empirical models. We try to combine both models and to also use the advantage uh, of each family of them in only to reduce the limitations of the other family of models. Now I will present some of the ways in which the model can be used corresponding equivalent questions. And I will start with a recent uh, machine learning application in uh, tracking disease progression heterogeneity in Alzheimer's disease. Recently, we obtained transcriptomic data for about 200 participants in the as, uh, spectrum of Alzheimer and Huntington. And the data was corresponding to the cortex region of postmortem Soviets and to the uh, blood, whole blood uh, Soviet that are still alive. What we have here in the mirror in B is a representation of all the transcriptomic data for all the Soviets and the different transcripts. Then we used a given computational model uh, that was just consistent on a constructed dimensionality reduction technique that allows to compress all that data or to reduce uh, or aggregate all that massive amount of data in a few set of components that then allow it to represent each participant in a given disease space where proximity to the origin would be uh, reflecting how uh, arterial, how advanced uh, would be uh, the person in terms of the disease process. The closer the person will be to the origin of the disease space, where we, will, we assume that the person was closer to be a NOMA or clinically NOMA, and the father was it was assumed to be uh, associated to uh, more and more advanced with disease progression. Based on this, we defined uh, an individual score that we call pseudo time that we be reflecting or was taken as a measure of uh, advanced in disease progression. We verified that this pseudo time was highly uh, predictive of the level of neuropathology in the brain and uh, cognitive, uh, cognitive decline or cognitive deterioration. Uh, with time. We also found that it is possible, was possible to subtype the patient or to identify which kind of disease or disorder we have each person based on the position of that disease space. It's important to remember that this model was not trained. So it was the outputs that we get from the model are only based on the specific data patterns that are intrinsic to the data. We can also go back 
uh, to identify which specific genes were associated or were contributing the most to uh, the prediction of the disease process and uh, to understanding better the uh, heterogeneity of the different disorders that we consider. We can also, or we also analyze or identify the main molecular pathways involved or reflected or associated with the disease advance. However, this model was only using one kind of uh, molecular data. Recently, we extended the model to include all the variable information. And then we consider not only transcriptomic data, but also epigenomics, proteomics, and metabolomics for the same subjects. Again, we try to identify sub trajectories, but in this case, well, uh, assuming that each sub trajectory will be associated with, uh, with a given this, uh, disease uh, variant, and uh, a person or the position of each person on each trajectory will be reflecting how advanced the person will be in terms of developing uh, that, uh, the disease corresponding to that uh, variant. We estimate that again, a pseudo time, that will be reflecting how advanced the person will be in the pathway to uh, reflect or to have uh, Alzheimer's dementia. And we also will be obtaining a, a number that will be reflecting the score of the subtype that each person will be belonging to. We obtained that uh, there were three main uh, subtypes of Alzheimer's disease that were uh, robust across different permutation uh, techniques. And also we found that they could be obtained not only uh, analyzing the brain data, but also the uh, blood data from living patients. We uh, identified that these subtypes were highly different across the different layers of molecular information. And importantly, persons having or belonging to a given uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease subtype, we're having very specific cell type alterations in the brain. In addition, we identified which specific uh, CPG islands or uh, methylated genes, uh, differential expressive genes, proteins, uh, metabolites, and brain phenotypes were associated to each specific Alzheimer's disease subtype. However, it's important to point out that the observer Alzheimer's uh, disease uh, heterogeneity at the molecular level cannot be entirely explained by ne neuropathological patterns, including amyloid or tau uh, brain uh, patterns. Also, it cannot be explained by clinical severity, uh, severity uh, some specific genes like APOE, or some uh, demographic characteristics but, uh, like age, sex, and education. And the models that we'll be presenting next will provide or help me to explain better why this, this happens. Recently, we also propose a multifactorial thousand model of uh, disease uh, propagation and uh, intervention, and therapeutic intervention. That assume that changing a given biological factor at a given brain region, let's say, increasing amyloid or tau the position and a given brain region will be a function of all the local causal interactions with all the biological factors, like in the influence of the vascular system on the amyloid uh, accumulation, the interaction between the meta metabolic system and the vascular system, neuronal activity, the level of the atrophy. So this, we were, we are passing now from the empirical models that are able to make predictions, but they don't often deep uh, biological explanations to a model that uh, is assuming that there are specific ways of interaction between the different biological factors at a general, in the general sense. And um, that we'll be also assuming that alterations in the brain can propagate some specific brain regions to other brain regions, plus that any change in a given biological factor will be a function or will be depending of standard inputs, like if the person is taking drugs, if the person is doing physical exercise, which kind of diet is having the person. Mathematically, this general model can be translated to a set of differential equations. I will not enter in detail here, I will just mention that these kind of a, a, a formalisms and a, a models are using uh, in many of the engineering applications that we use on a daily basis, like uh, industrial engineering, aerospace, civil engineering, electrical engineering. But in practice, what we do is to just acquire or obtain different imaging modalities for each person at different time points. 
We can also incorporate a cognitive, a cognitive and clinical evaluations. And this allows to quantify the different biological uh, properties of the brain at each time point. And then applying the model at some specific uh, calculation, uh, optimization procedures, we can obtain at an individualized level how the different biological factors interact. So we are passing from an empirical model that doesn't offer information to a model that could offer an explanation of what is happening at the individual level and how those multifactorial interventions are contributing to the cognitive and the clinical deterioration to we see at the individual level. This kind of model allows to, of course, reconstruct until some point the uh, multifactorial interactions and evolution of alterations across the brain for different biological factors. We can see here, this is a person that started with a mid cognitive impairment and the model was able to reconstruct the uh, increase in tau deposition across the whole brain that was in parallel with uh, amyloid deposition and increasing uh, brain atrophy. We also have verified that the model can predict future levels of atrophy with a, a high accuracy and the associated cognitive decline. However, one of the main applications that this model can have is that if then we are interested in to uh, identify the optimum treatment or which treatment will be optimum for each patient, then all what we need to do is to invert the equation of the model, passing to the right side of the equation, the desired change that we would like to observe in the brain. And of course, those changes could be associated or not to specific clinical symptoms. And passing to the left side of the equation, the external input that we will need to introduce or uh, provide to that person in order to cause that desired change. All the rest elements of the equation is the same. So we keep, we maintain the regional multifactor interaction between the different uh, biological factors that we are considering. And of course, the uh, intra-brain propagation of alterations. If we evaluate or calculate uh, the different treatments that, uh, uh, or different effects that potential intervention we have at the individual level, then we can obtain something that uh, we call multifactorial uh, therapeutic fingerprint. That is no more than a vector, a numerical vector, with values reflecting how effective will be according to a model to stop the neurodegenerative process or to even reverse part of it by targeting each of the biological factors that we are considering. Remember that in this case, the biological factors will be associated with a specific neuroimaging modalities. We found that, for example, patients with different, with the same clinical symptoms, will, will be presenting different therapeutic needs according to the model. Patient number one in this example will be more benefited by a vascular and a metabolic intervention. And there are specific ways to improve the vascular system and the metabolic system, like a physical performing physical exercise or so adopting a ketogenic diet therapy. The patient number two will be more benefited by an anti-amyloid or an anti-tau intervention. And there are drugs that are targeting those specific uh, methodoproteins like aducanumab or solanesumab. The patient number three, according to the model, will not be benefited by any single target intervention. And what we suggest is that the pers this patient will be more benefited by a multifactorial intervention. So target the different uh, biological factors like performing physical exercise, taking aducanumab, a ketogenic diet. However, these treatments suggested by the model are still at the macroscopic level. So we are only suggesting to change properties in the vascular system, metabolic system, or structural or tau. However, we are not saying how that could be achieved uh, at the molecular, from the molecular, going at the molecular level to provoke those desired changes at the macroscopic and then clinical level. Recently, we extended these uh, models to incorporate genes and neurotransmitter receptors information. And we, first of all, we talk about a model uh, that Quadria de Wallet, a PhD candidate in one lab, uh, developed and validated um, a, a study. So the model was the same. He quadri extended all previous multifactorial causal model to uh, include or assume that genes are also controlling the multifactorial interactions between the different biological factors that we are considering. We keep all the other same 
uh, terms of the equation. And at the end, it's the similar idea, but now assuming that change that we observe in a given biological factor at a given region, let's say an increase in atrophy, will be the consequence of the multifactorial inter uh, causal interaction between neuropathological factors and how the genes control those interactions plus the effects that propagates across the brain. Based on this, uh, we uh, identify which specific genes will be controlling or seems to be controlling the interactions that are causing increasing tau deposition, amyloid deposition, the alterations in vascular flow, increasing atrophy. So what we have here is a whole, complete whole map of not only the macroscopic, important macroscopic uh, alterations during the development of Alzheimer's disease, but also how this microscopic, each of these macroscopic alterations is controlled by the interaction with other factors and which specific genes are modulating those interactions. So let's say that if now we would be interested in to reduce a tau in the brain, we could identify and we could select some of these genes according to which, which secondary mechanisms we would want to affect and start dieting that gene, which could be particularly helpful or uh, for uh, improving targets for uh, genetic uh, therapies. Similarly, uh, another PhD candidate in our lab in collaboration with Carl Sires and Nicola Palomero from Jewish extended the previous model to consider then uh, the densities, the regional densities of uh, about 15 different uh, neurotransmitter receptors. Again, we consider that the multifactorial interaction between the different factors will be controlled by, potentially controlled by the different receptors. And then the model allow it to estimate at the individual level which receptors will be, could be potentially more affected, which again provided a roadmap of which receptors will be modulating, a specific receptor will be modulating the interactions of each pair, between each pair of biological factors and subsequently, which of them would be important to target while considering a personalized intervention uh, in the spectrum of Alzheimer's disease. We also tell uh, in uh, subject specific receptor alterations that, as we can see here, were, uh, could be different for patients having the same clinical symptoms. So that's very important. Usually, most of the clinical treatments or, or the therapeutic intervention that exist for neurodegeneration are applied based on uh, to group with similar clinical symptoms. However, well, we are observing that person with the same clinical symptoms could have different, totally different molecular alterations and therapeutic mix. And this model could help to differentiate between the different uh, subgroup of patients and also could provide explanations of why they need different treatments. We continue trying to improve the level of the resolution uh, at the molecular level to which the model we work with. And for that now we are going, we're considering also well, to go beyond the gene expression level to consider uh, also RNA velocity. That is a new metric or a new concept, not only uh, reflecting or not only associated with the abundance of the genes in a given tissue, but also uh, associated with the dynamic change on, on those genes and the uh, mechanisms underlying those uh, uh, dynamic change. For example, we have, here in the left, we have a population, uh, a subpopulation of different cell types and uh, that were organized according to uh, the gene expression. And on the right, we have how all uh, what is called the R RNA velocity fields that will be representing how fast this each specific cell will be changing during an associated um, disease process or even during a normal aging process. We calculated these uh, RNA velocity fields for a uh, different stage of Alzheimer's disease and we also or confirmed that uh, the roles of the cells are changing during the disease progression. And we also uh, verified that there are completely different or very different chains associated with the typical uh, gene expression analysis and the new concept of RNA velocity. So only when we identify which the differential genes uh, based on abundance and on RNA velocity, we are that only 1.2% of the genes overlap. And then this allows to identify all the molecular mechanisms that are altered during a disease progression that uh, would be missed with traditional 
uh, genetic analysis like synaptic alterations and cell cell dysregulation. Soon we will be, or relatively soon, we will be incorporating all this information in the personalized models. Now we uh, in consider not only molecular information, but we'll be linking that molecular information, deep molecular information, uh, with the uh, neuroimaging and clinical data. Finally, I would like to mention that most of these models are available, have been uh, available uh, in uh, the European toolbox that uh, allows to go from the gene expression to incorporate gene expression, any kind of neuropathological uh, molecular information, neuroimaging data, clinical information to apply the different models that I described and models that I, I didn't have time to present now. And soon we have incorporated the models developed by Quadri and Amen. It also allows uh, identification and visualization of different processes across time and prediction of future time points, uh, macroscopic alterations. To finish, I would like to conclude or just highlight two main points. The first one is that so far or until now, no any biomarker can generalize well to heterogeneous diseases because that's in, in, in fact, like in contradiction with the concept of heterogeneity that implies that the, there are different groups of different patients presenting different kinds of uh, alterations and many different layers. And also that these samples might help, but they are not enough. We also need to work with individualizing analysis. In some multifactor data integration with personalized models are indispensable for effective medical care. Thank you very much. I would like to help uh, the funding organization, starting with HMHL, and also I would like to send to my students and the uh, many young researchers that have passed by the lab and interacted with us and helped us to improve all these models and ideas. Thank you.